let's talk about Charlottesville in 2017. And this was yeah. a big kind of breakout point for you, right? Because a bunch of your footage, you you basically caught the footage of the Dockers wearing tiki torch carrying neo Nazis saying Jews will not replace us. Yeah. Um, you know, how did you end up there, and what was it like being at that event versus what you how you saw it represented in Things mm. like the Vice documentary about it, which licensed right. your footage, right? Or did uh, they use any of your Vice footage? has licensed my footage of Charlottesville, okay. but you're probably talking about that original doc called Race and Terror did yeah. not have my footage okay. in it. Um, so Charlottesville, sort of like January 6th, um, something about it that I think that a lot of the media missed is that there were events that led up to it. Mm -hmm. So in the case of Charlottesville, I filmed a rally in Washington, D.C. that was, I want to say, June 25th, so about, about a month and a half earlier. And the speaker roster was actually almost exactly the same speakers that were slated for Charlottesville. You had Richard Spencer, who at the time was you know very popular on the alt-right, uh, Christopher Cantwell. Um, uh, baked Alaska, yeah. <laughs> um, a, a number of these guys. And so I sort of filmed what very likely would have been similar or kind of the yeah. same speeches that would have been given at Charlottesville had it not like devolved mm -hmm. uh, into insanity. Um, actually, at the end of that event, a month and a half earlier, Richard Spencer says, everybody, Charlottesville, August 12th, it's going to be a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. And so I knew about not what would actually like how it would go down, but but the fact that such a rally would be occurring was was known to me a month and a half earlier um, mm -hmm. because they were saying so. Yeah. And again, I do think that there's a lot of the time that like the media plays catch up with mm -hmm. these events. Right. Charlottesville ends up being this huge uh, story. And then the media yeah. is scrambling to license footage to tell their story. Right. And of course, you know, made a really big thing out of Trump's remarks about it. But I, I don't think it would have taken them by surprise as much if they had mm -hmm. gone to these earlier rallies. Um, some of which turned violent and some of which did not. Yeah. Um, for me, Charlottesville did represent a pretty big escalation, though. Um, the chant of uh, Jews will not replace us actually was quite literally an escalation because it came out of a chant of you will not replace right. us. Like it was kind of like they were masking the intent or the meaning mm -hmm. of what they were doing, um, you know, and behind a very thin, thin wall. But right. Yeah. Um, you know, but they had sort of graduated to saying exactly what they right. were trying to say by chant by marching through UVA and saying that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. And the the goal, I mean, or they were defending a statue of Robert E. Lee. Was that the putative? In theory, kind of the purpose yeah. of August twelfth, um, for which they got the permit, was to was to to stand up for the statue of Robert E. Mm -hmm. Lee, which people had wanted to take down, and and which has yeah. now been taken down um, many years after right. that. Um, However, I think by the time that that rally occurred, it was very clear that that wasn't really the purpose mm -hmm. uh, or the overarching theme of it. So there, there were neo-Confederate groups who probably are, you know, oh, no, the statue. Yeah. Right. And that's their main thing. Um, so then what was it? It was just like a rallying point for a uh, like an alt-right neo-Nazi-ish. Well, think about what the title of it was. The event was literally called Unite the Right. Mm -hmm. And so the purpose of their event in theory was that they wanted to get. Uh, the 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 absolute most extreme, like mm -hmm. actual avowed neo Nazis, together with other kinds of white nationalists, and then all the way down to like average Trump supporters. Mm -hmm. um, I think though that what happened is as it got closer, it became very abundantly clear who is going to this and what you're essentially standing for if you show up at it. Mm -hmm. um, and so that was especially especially clear when on August 12th, I'm sorry, August 11th, uh, the day before the 12th. They, you know, are chanting Jews will not replace us mm -hmm. while carrying, you know, torches. So if, right. if you were a normal Trump supporter yeah. who showed up and you thought you were going to be standing for a statue and just, you know, uniting with the right. Yeah. Uh, you couldn't have possibly showed up on the day of the Unite the Right rally without knowing basically you're standing with Nazis. Yeah. And then you captured the, the car attack there, right? So I, I was basically right around the corner mm -hmm. um, when that happened. So I heard the car attack and then. Push. And this is a, a, a member or somebody affiliated with the protest ran over, ran over various people, but killed right. a person. Yeah. So James Alex Fields, uh, who I think my understanding is now he's he's got 20, he's got to die 23 times in federal prison before he can start his Virginia okay. <laughs> sentence. Once he dies there, then he's mm -hmm. got 420 years left. Okay. Um, so uh, he's got he's got a while. Um, so he had participated with a group uh, called Vanguard America at the time. Um, 
And he had like their shield and their emblems mm-hmm. and stuff uh, that he was wearing throughout the day, kind of as everybody kind of mm-hmm. later learned. Um, but as the event was kind of ending in chaos, um, some people were celebratorily marching um, through the streets of Charlottesville. And he drove his uh, yeah. vehicle basically through that crowd, um, probably did not realize that there were two cars parked on the other side of the crowd, mm-hmm. which is why it impacted and he ends up going in reverse after right. crashing, whereas he probably thought that he could have just driven straight mm-hmm. um, through all of them. And so, I, I, indeed, I filmed the aftermath mm. of that. Medics! Everybody on the fucking sidewalk! The point that I would make actually about kind of the historical relevance of that moment is that Vanguard America, whose shield he mm-hmm. was carrying and so forth, um, basically is what Patriot Front came out of. So today there's a lot of focus on like, where did Patriot Front come from? Are they mm-hmm. like an FBI operation or mm-hmm. something like that? I hear a, a lot of my own od- audience even is like, mm-hmm. these guys must be feds or something. These are essentially white nationalists who all wear the same masks and khakis mm-hmm. and everything. Um their leader, Thomas Rousseau, I interviewed at Charlottesville mm-hmm. and uh, torch in hand uh, before lighting it. He told me that he identifies as a fascist, mm. um, you know, not trying to <laughs> obfuscate like yeah. his you know, position or whatever. But their their rebrand into Patriot Front uh, directly came from the, the failure of the rally at Charlottesville. Can you assess what your coverage and other coverage of that rally and, and I guess keeps to yours, the primary document? coverage. Yeah. Um, you know, was that effective in revealing what was going on or does it get decontextualized or recontextualized into something completely separate? Sure. So, I mean, there are examples of it being recontextualized into a work of art. So I would mm-hmm. say, for example, Black Klansman, the Spike Lee mm-hmm. movie, like that yeah. has my footage toward the end of it. And right. it's not done in a deceptive way at all. But right. obviously the the construction of, yeah. you know, an informant who informed on the KKK before I was born. And then, yeah. and then it transitions into footage of Charlottesville of mine. Mm-hmm. Like to me, that's fascinating, but uh, is not yeah. as like journalistic of a product. Um, there were a lot of individual moments that make more sense because of footage that I had. So to give mm-hmm. an example, there was only one shot fired at Charlottesville. Mm-hmm. There was a guy called uh, Richard Preston mm-hmm. who, uh, as he saw a counter protester uh, basically use a lighter and some kind of aerosol can to make a makeshift yeah. flamethrower, um, he fired a single round into the ground next to that person. And I had, and I did not witness the moment that he fired that bullet um, that was filmed by my understanding as a member of the ACLU, like a le- legal observer. Mm-hmm. Um, however, just minutes earlier, I actually did film as he pulled out that same handgun twice, pointing it at the crowd. <laughs> Go ahead, motherfucker, I'm telling you. I'll shoot you. I think that that, for example, contextualizes his own um, state of mind going mm-hmm. into it, that it's not just like, oh, it was an emergency. I really had to shoot at a guy. Um, you know, yeah. I was able to show that he was also pulling it out uh, in effect because people were throwing water bottles at him, you know, at a much uh, sort of greater distance. Um, I think the other thing that you can see in my footage that was important about mm-hmm. understanding Charlottesville was that the police really screwed up. Mm. Um, and so... You know, people can certainly attribute blame to the people actually doing the assaulting, yeah. the fighting and so forth. And so I don't want to minimize that. Right. But um, in general, it's pretty well known. Like you keep the way that police should uh, carry the objectives of protecting both the right to, mm-hmm. to speech and expression, uh, but also mm-hmm. life, liberty and property. Right. Is to keep two opposing sides separate. Mm-hmm. And at Charlottesville, they very, very minimally actually work to keep sides separate and apart. But when an unlawful assembly was declared, right, and Mm -hmm. this is something that I've seen at many other protests that like they decide this has gone on too long, they're breaking windows or they're or they're fighting each other, whatever the issue is, they declare an unlawful assembly. Right now, it's illegal to be here because we've declared that this is a riot. So everyone has to leave. When they did that, the police basically put tried to clear out the park 
by pushing all of the right wingers out into the direction that the that the counter protesters were. Mm. So the police, in effect, pushed the two sides into each other. Yeah. Uh, like, oh, they're fighting. So let's push them into each other to clear right. out the violence. And and that greatly exacerbated the violence. Um, I think that it's very easy to focus on the actual characters involved and especially because the police were at the periphery of it. Mm -hmm. um, there's probably less coverage that kind of shows the dynamic of how that happened. Mm -hmm. But it's something that I'm proud that I was able to to demonstrate. Right. I think that it contributed to history's understanding of, no. of how that failure occurred.